I never had a dream or a vision. I just fell in love with Jesus. And when I fell in love with Jesus, I fell in love with the dreams that are on his heart. And I just, when I found out that Jesus had not just died for me, but he died for all the lost children across the world, and he wanted them all to come home, then when I, when I fell in love with him, I just knew I was called from the very beginning to move to the nations. And I received the place uh, through actually my childhood friend. And him and I grew up wrestling the dirt in Pakistan. And uh, we just, yeah, amazing, amazing friends. He felt called to the Himalayas. And so as soon as I got saved, gave my life to Jesus, I knew that's where I was called to. I said, I'm gonna go with you. I don't need a dream, I don't need a vision, I don't need 10 confirmations. I have the Great Commission. I'm called to do it in community. Let's go together and do it. And so, married my beautiful wife. After a few years of preparation, God prepared us, and we just we moved out here. I would just I would say to a generation of people who are looking for a calling, looking for purpose, looking for what God has for them, find it in the heart of Jesus. Look where He has not received His reward. Look at the open a map. Look at the nations. Go to the hardest places. Find the places that have yet to say yes to Jesus. There is your calling. It's the heart of Jesus laid laid out, and we get to give him his reward in the nations. The snows that bound this land spiritually are melting God, and the gospel is breaking out like never before in history. But we think you live in a day that the men who went before dreamed of living in God. But that people groups are turning to you like never before. And Father, we ask that your presence would go with us to these villages today. God, that you would melt people's hearts at the light of the knowledge of you break in today, God. We ask God for strength in our hearts, strength in our bodies, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How old? Eyes open. Open, open, open. Anka Kulnos. Yes, Chris Kunama. Anka Kul. What are you doing? I'm going to Yes, Chris Kunama. Open his ears. 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 Open his Oh, 1040 window, isolated Himalayas. 
We've been down in that valley, that river valley, as we were walking. Yeah. Pockets of villages, villages, That's little villages. Cool. I want my kids to grow up not knowing what boring Christianity is. And so I think raising your kids in the nations is, there's no better place to raise your kids. The first hand education and what it is to be in love with Jesus, see the supernatural break out, signs and wonders, people coming home to the Lord. I would rather raise my kids in a war zone, but then be in love with Jesus, than raise them in comfort, in um, in a first world nation where where there's no difficulty, but they don't know Jesus. So I'll take my chances in the will of God on the on the mission field, and uh, I love it. Our daughter was born and uh, is being raised out here. And we want to have lots of kids, and we're in love with the Lord. It's the best place. It is so much fun to raise a family in a foreign nation, and they're, I think they're going to have the best childhood ever. Just playing in the dirt, loving, uh, loving kids, seeing the supernatural, and um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not hard. They, it's, it's a joy to raise a family over here. Mm -hmm. We want to do ministry as, as a family. I believe kids, kids are filled with faith, and I want, our kids are going to grow up praying for the sick, um, preaching the gospel, loving on other kids. We want to we be living in the villages up on the um, up in the borderlands, up in the Himalayas. And so our home is going to be open for everyone to come in, the lost, the broken, uh, for discipleship. We have to pour into to young girls, our kids, just to to walk out what it is to be a child in love with Jesus. And then, uh, and then go in. Basketball, then we pray to the place and ask if anyone's sick. And, uh, yeah, just fill it out as we go. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the Put your hand on his cheek. His pain is going to go in his neck. Look at that. Yes, you can see the house. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, <laughs> 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 To buy middle Baho, there to buy one Kachura Ho. What a Bajao. And yes, to Chris, life, Ratna Gunnar, see? To buy a Harik Ratna Sunita. I mean, to, to natural eyes, it makes no sense. I mean, if if you're living this life, then it makes no sense. You are, you are, you are losing your life. And so, but if you believe heaven is real, if you believe that hell is real, if you believe that every day that millions of souls are going to a crisis eternity, then moving to the nations, sharing the gospel with those who've never heard the name of Jesus before, giving them a chance to, to hear what Jesus did for them, that there actually is a God who loves them, that wants them to be his kids, that wants them to come home, that Jesus actually has already paid the price for their salvation, that they, have a, they, have a, have, they should have the right to hear the gospel. So there's a famine in the land, a famine of the good news of Jesus. And and if if we begin if the, with the premise that that is reality, that this is reality, that that the lost, that millions of people all around the world are going are going to hell, then it my life given in to some people group who've never who've never heard before, that's no sacrifice.
I I love my baby girl. I adore her. She is like a little chipmunk princess. I love her so much. But what I would say is that everyone has a natural love for their own kids. The baby comes out of the womb, you're just in love with her or him. You just, oh, it's amazing. Being a dad is incredible. But the thing is, is that this is a natural love. It's a natural love that God's put inside us for our own kids. But there are orphan, orphan, orphan kids, orphan nations all over the world that no one cares for. There are orphan people groups that no one, no one is praying for, no one is going to, no one's sharing the gospel with. And that is the love that God is wanting to impart in our hearts, is, is the love, the spirit of adoption. We would say, these aren't my people, this is not my nation, these aren't my, this isn't my country. I don't know who they are, they speak a different language, but I have the spirit of adoption inside of me. I've been adopted by my father, and I will go and I will give my life for people who look totally different than me, speak a different language, live in a different country, eat weird bugs. I don't care because I have the spirit of adoption inside of me. It's not a natural love, it's a supernatural love that's imparted. One day, we're all gonna stand before the, the throne of God. One day, we're all gonna look into the same eyes of fire. One day, we're all gonna be there in just a moment. We think that there is a, uh, that, you know, 70 years for us seems like a long time. 80 years seems like a long time. I'm already 27, I'm already about a third done the race. I, I, I seem young on the outside, but really, I'm about a third done, a third done the race. So soon, we're gonna stand before God. So soon, we're gonna give an account for how we live this life. I wanna give my life for God's reward in this generation. I wanna see the fulfillment of the Great Commission in this generation. It's what I wanna give my life for. It, there is no greater cause. There is no greater movement to join. It's to see Jesus receive his reward. See Matthew 28 fulfilled in our generation. And uh, I would just say, say yes to Jesus. This is the cause. This is what God is saying to our generation is, will you say yes to me? Will you take the gospel to the ends of the earth? So look into the eyes of God, look into the face of Jesus, and just say yes.